In this video, I want to talk about setting up DKIM and SPF on a web server so that you can hopefully have a better chance of sending uh, email to providers like Gmail and Office 365 and go to the inbox as opposed to the spam folder. Now, I usually hate it when uh, YouTube videos take too long to get started, so I'm just going to jump right into this, though we will circle back at the end and we'll talk a little bit of theory, hints and tricks, etc. Finally, I should also mention that this is a video specifically geared towards cPanel users, so a lot of the stuff that we do, in particular with our, our zone file, is going to be applicable to basically any host. Okay, so let's dive right in. So there's two technologies that we care about, again, uh, DKIM and SPF. Uh, in cPanel, you're basically going to log into one of your user's accounts. You're going to go to the email authentication section, and you want to make sure that both of these guys have been enabled, so DKIM and SPF. Now, when you do that, at least in my case, the very first time, and we'll start here with DKIM, I got a big text box and it said, hey, here is the value, um, uh, the raw value of your DKIM key or whatever it was called. And uh, unfortunately, because it's all set up properly now, it doesn't show that anymore. But I did copy and paste it for the video here and it basically looked like this. So this was like the raw key that I got. Um, unfortunately, uh, this didn't work for me so well. So basically what we're supposed to do with this is go into our zone file and create a text entry where we basically have everything in between the quotes. Um, this did not work for me at all. Uh, and it turns out it's because this is actually not the right value. So the first really big hint here, and again, I apologize because it's specific to cPanel, but the value that this box, again, it's not here anymore, but when I first enabled this, the value that I got in the box was actually wrong. It turns out that what we need to do is modify this value just a little bit right here, such that for this P key right here, we actually use our raw public key value. And we can actually find our raw public value, our raw public key value at var cpanel domain keys public, and then the name of our site. Specifically, I'm in var cpanel domain keys public. Um, the site I want to look at is skitcast.net. So I'm just going to nano into that, and then here is the value that I want. So I'm just going to take everything in between the beginning and end. I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to paste it into this version of my key. So basically, I took the value it gave me at first and I modified it a little bit. Now, we don't want this part right here. We don't want this opening quote mark, but we do want everything basically here, except that instead of, again, the p-value being what it gave me, we want this value from right here. So in other words, you can kind of see the difference right here. This is a value that we're going to paste into our zone file. Okay, so how does this actually work then? Well, if I go into, uh, in this case, I'm using GoDaddy's DNS. I'm going to go into my domain name. I'm going to go to my zone uh, file. And then under my text records right here, I'm going to add a record with a name called default dot underscore domain key. So this exact value. There are variations of this that you can use, but this is like the default one that most services use. So default dot underscore domain key. For the value then, we're simply going to paste in, at least for me, this modified value right here again. So if you think about key value pairs, V is the key and then the value is this, this is just a bunch of key value pairs. So it's V equals this, K equals this, and then P equals this right here. Notice, again, at least in my case, that I don't have a semicolon at the end of this, and there's no other extraneous characters like uh, backslashes or uh, quotation marks. So very, very important that it's kind of like this raw value right here. Uh, as soon as I did that though, basically copy and paste it in, we can save our zone file and we should hopefully be set up for um, uh, DKIM. The other uh, item that we needed to uh, knock about with was the SPF value. So this one was actually a little bit more simple because cPanel actually gave me the right value um, from the beginning, uh, from the get-go. So I basically just literally took this, copied it, and then under my zone file here, I just created an at record that pointed to that exact value. So that's all I had to do there. I didn't have to scour through the uh, uh, um, terminal and, and find values and change things. I just copy this and paste it into an at record here in my host file. Um, I save both of these changes and then we should be good to go. Now, uh, that's the uh, the short version of it. Here now is a slightly longer discussion, hopefully not too much longer, about some of the theory behind this. Um, so first things first, let's talk a little bit how you can test for some of this stuff. So there's two main ways that we can do this. The first is we can use Gmail, 
and the other one is we can send an email to auth-results at verifier.port25.com. Now each of these has their own specific uses. Let me talk about uh, Google first. So using Gmail in Google here is a really handy way to quickly check to see if you have um, your verifier settings uh, set up properly or your DKIM and SPF. And the way we do that is we send an email to ourselves from the account that we're working on and we go to this little drop down right here and we'll say show original. When we do that, then we get a little something like this. And there's two entries that we care about. You'll notice SPF equals pass. So hooray for that. But then DKM equaled fail. This is the first email that I sent to myself when I started playing around tonight. Uh, by contrast, here's actually an email from, in this case, HBO Now that did not go to my spam box. This went to my promotions folder. And as you can see here, that they have both SPF and DKIM set up properly. So both of these pass. Finally, just for the sake of completeness, here is what my server sends now, SPF and DKM both pass. So that's the first way you can do this. Let's say though that we get a fail right here. So uh, unfortunately, Gmail doesn't tell us what the failure is, and that is where auth-results at verifier.port25.com comes in. So you basically, same as with the Gmail, send an email to this address. Doesn't need to have a subject or a body, just send an email to it. And then it'll reply back then with a status report on your settings. And so here's like the first one I sent to myself. You can see here that just like uh, Gmail, SPF passed, but DKIM failed right here. However, unlike Gmail, it actually gave me a specific reason. So under DKIM check re, uh, details right here, you can see here that I had an error. This key doesn't exist. You notice before I said this default dot underscore domain key, that's why we want that right there because that's what this expects to have. So I basically uh, added that and a few items later then I started getting a different error. So DKIM failed and I got a different error, but again, it kind of told me what the problem was. It said, hey, you have an invalid character. And without going into too much detail, that's where all of this nonsense came in, is this value right here had basically a quote mark. It didn't like that at all. Uh, finally though, uh, if you have everything set up properly, again, just like the Gmail, you could see that SPF passes, DCAM passes, etc. So those are two really handy resources to kind of get a, a fix on, if you do have issues, what they might be. Finally though, a quick honorable mention or two to some other items that really helped me throughout this process. Uh, so the first was just cPanel's documentation. Uh, this doesn't talk about a whole lot of things if you have an error, but it's nice to have this uh, bookmark. So this just kind of talks about the settings that we've been uh, dealing with right here. And for web hosts, it has some useful scripts right here that we can run. Uh, the other thing that was really handle is, uh, handy is uh, this whatsmydns.net. So this is really handy specifically because um, if we take this zone entry that we've been adding, this text record right here, and we plug it in here using our domain name at the end, we can actually search for a text record and this will show what all the different uh, DNS servers around the world actually see. And as you can see right here, this is literally just that value that I had pasted in from this block right here, right? So this is just this guy right here. So it's just a text entry. And as you can see here, not all uh, DNS servers actually have that record updated yet. And so this is handy because you're gonna make this change, but just because you've made it and saved your zone file doesn't mean that like all DNS work, it's propagated to all the different servers. And who knows what uh, auth results uh, dot verifier, it, you know, who knows who they're using. And so very, very important and I think handy just to see that when you do make a change uh, where it's all propagated through. Finally, uh, a huge shout out uh, to this site right here. So the cPanel uh, knowledgebase.net. Never heard of the site before, but this is where I found where the uh, keys are stored. So this var cPanel domain keys, of course, I don't care about the private one. I actually care about the public key which is why I kind of modified this to be var cPanel domain keys public, but that told me where I could find these stupid keys so that I could get the raw value as opposed to the uh, bogus value that the cPanel uh, 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 front end was showing me. Uh, so huge thanks to whoever wrote that, that was super, super helpful. So anyway, speaking of hopefully uh, helpful, hopefully this has been helpful for, for you as well. Um, I literally just started this tonight, so I'm sure I'm probably leaving some things out, probably got some stuff wrong in terms of like what this stuff is all supposed to do. But um, if you have any corrections or comments, questions, let us know in the comments. Hopefully we can all benefit from this. Um, as far as my understanding of this subject matter goes, 
this type of work is going to become more and more commonplace. Spam is a huge problem. The big email providers like Gmail and Office 365, they're cracking down on this. And so we need to do what we can as small website operators uh, to make sure that we're sending email using the proper verification processes. Uh, it helps all of us in the end if we do so. So anyway, thanks for watching.